The Cleveland Browns versus the Baltimore Ravens. The old Browns versus the new Browns. On paper, you would think this is one of the best rivalries in all of sports. However, since the Browns and Ravens started facing each other in 1999, rivalry is probably the last word most people would use to describe this matchup. The Ravens lead the all-time series 35 to 13, and until the late 2010s, it looked like that gap was only gonna get bigger. But despite the lopsided record, this series has been a lot more interesting than one may realize. So there's actually a somewhat compelling story about the Browns and Ravens through the years. Now that that's been established, why don't we turn this into a little history lesson? Let's do a rundown of what should have been one of the NFL's all-time great rivalries, the Cleveland Browns versus the Baltimore Ravens. In 1995, Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell shocked the world by relocating the Browns to Baltimore, Maryland. After intense legal battles, Modell was forced to leave the Browns' name and colors in Cleveland and instead rename his team the Baltimore Ravens. This meant all of the Cleveland Browns' history would remain in Cleveland and not be associated with the newfound Ravens. Not long after, it was announced that a new expansion team would be placed in Cleveland, and they would be called, you guessed it, the Cleveland Browns. However, the city of Cleveland was still shocked and heartbroken over losing their team. And to add insult to injury, they had to watch the Ravens win the Super Bowl just a few years later. But Cleveland would have their shot at revenge. The reborn Cleveland Browns would officially join the NFL in 1999, and they were placed in the same division as the Baltimore Ravens. The math was clear on this one. This matchup definitely had the makings to be one of the most heated rivalries in not just the NFL, but all of sports. So now that we've explained the backstory between these two teams, let's explore the history of the rivalry thus far, starting in its inaugural year, 1999. The Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens first faced off on September 26, 1999. The new Browns, led by rookies Tim Couch and Kevin Johnson, actually put up a decent fight against a vastly superior Ravens team, but ultimately fell short 17-10. This game turned out to be a mirage, however. The Ravens would go on to outscore the Browns 97-16 over the next three meetings, obviously winning all three. So the first two years of this matchup was complete and utter domination on the part of the Ravens. But this was to be expected, as the Ravens were in the midst of a Super Bowl run, while the Browns were a mere expansion team trying to find their way. 2001 is when things would finally get interesting. On October 21st, 2001, Baltimore traveled to Cleveland and met a completely different Browns team. Led by new head coach Butch Davis, the 2001 Browns had swagger. This was reflected on the field as the Browns would beat the Ravens on this day 24-14. This was a very emotional win as the city of Cleveland viewed this as their first real takedown on Art Modell. The Browns would go on to sweep the season series when they again defeated the Ravens in Week 10, this time 27-17. For Browns fans, a season sweep of the Ravens was just what the doctor ordered. Things would remain competitive over the next six seasons as the Browns and Ravens would nearly split the next 12 games. Rather than doing a summary of every single game, let's just go over the games worth mentioning, like this one for instance. On December 22, 2002, the Browns traveled to Baltimore and put together a 92-yard scoring drive in the final two minutes to defeat the Ravens 14-13. This win put the Browns at 8-7, keeping their slim playoff hopes alive, and of course they would go on to make the playoffs this season. In 2003, the Ravens would return the favor by humiliating the Browns and making history in the process. On September 14, 2003, the Ravens defeated the Browns 33-13, all while their running back Jamal Lewis obliterated Cleveland's defense, amassing 295 yards rushing. That set the then record for most rushing yards in a single game. In 2004, the two teams met on a national stage, ESPN Sunday Night Football. The game was a defensive struggle for three quarters, but Browns punter Derek Frost put an end to that by putting up a seven-yard shank from Cleveland's own end zone. This led to a Jamal Lewis touchdown, giving the Ravens the lead. At the very end, the Browns went down the field and nearly tied the game, but Ed Reed picked off Jeff Garcia in the end zone and ran it back 106 yards for the score. This set the then record for longest interception return in NFL history. Skipping ahead to 2007. 2007 would be an interesting year for the rivalry. In free agency, the Browns picked up longtime Ravens running back Jamal Lewis, leading to some minor hostility. Jamal's first game against his former team came on September 30, 2007. The Browns won the game pretty handily by a score of 27-13. Fun fact, I was in attendance for this game and I distinctly remember jumping out of my seat when Jamal Lewis broke this long run. Cleveland would also win the second meeting in Week 11, 33-30, completing a season sweep of the Ravens. There was an interesting moment when Jamal Lewis was stopped near the Ravens' sideline, and he showed he still had some hard feelings for his former team. He emotionally spiked the ball and barked at the Ravens' sideline. But everyone remembers this game for one reason. For the tie. 
Dawson leans into it. Does he have enough? No good! There's a question whether the ball went past the crossbar and came back. We will take a look at this play. Well, then, that's exactly what happened. And if we can freeze it one more time, we're going to tell you. See, it hit that crossbar. Now, watch as it comes. See, right now, it's through the goal post. After discussion on the field, the field goal hit the top of the crossbar, went over and hit the extension on the backside, which, in fact, is a good field goal. It bounced back. The field goal was good. Truly one of the weirdest sequences you will ever see. The game went to overtime and the Browns went down the field and won on another Phil Dawson field goal, this time from 33 yards. This game is regarded as one of the most memorable Browns-Ravens games of all time, and as you just saw, for good reason. By the conclusion of the 2007 season, the Ravens held a small lead over the Browns in the all-time series. Baltimore led 11-7, and if you take away the first two years when Cleveland was barely fielding a competitive team, the series was 7-7, so the rivalry was very competitive at this point. The only things keeping this from becoming a top-tier rivalry was both teams not having a franchise quarterback, and the Browns rarely finishing a season with a winning record. Things were shaken up a bit in the 2008 offseason. The Ravens fired longtime head coach Brian Billick and hired Eagles special teams coach John Harbaugh to be his replacement. They also drafted quarterback Joe Flacco from Delaware in the first round. Things were changing, but as you will see, these were not good changes for the sake of the rivalry, and that would be made very clear at halftime of the first Browns-Ravens game in 2008. This is where the rivalry changed for the worse. On September 21, 2008, the Browns traveled to M&T Bank Stadium to take on the Ravens. Cleveland went into the locker room with a 10-7 lead at the half, and all looked well. The Browns seemed like they had control of the game, and it looked very possible they would get their 8th victory over the Ravens an inch closer in the all-time series. But at the start of the second half, Derek Anderson threw two bad picks back-to-back. -back. Kellen Winslow got lit up by Ray Lewis, causing the first one and Ed Reed jumped one of Derek Anderson's passes, causing the second one. That one resulted in a pick six, putting the Ravens up 21 to 10. What was a calm evening at M&T Bank Stadium quickly turned into a chaotic scene, and the Browns never recovered. Baltimore won 28 to 10, and as I said earlier, this would be a turning point in the series. Six weeks later, the two teams met again. It was a very important game for Cleveland as they pretty much needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Browns came to play on this day and it looked like they were going to topple the Ravens. Cleveland led 27-13 in the third quarter and it looked like the 2008 Browns would finally become what everyone expected them to be. But their defense would let them down big time and Braylon Edwards had a crushing drop in the fourth quarter. Long story short, the Browns lost an absolute heartbreaker 37-27 and their playoff hopes basically ended there. This was a devastating loss at the time, and if you recall that viral video of a Browns fan swearing outside the stadium after a loss, well that was this game, so that guy's feelings were completely justified. Amazingly, the Browns would go on to lose the next nine games against the Ravens, coming out to 11 straight losses to Baltimore. The losing streak lasted from 2008 to 2013, and that is the reason the all-time series is so lopsided today. Think about it, it was 11-7 after 2007, and it was 22-7 by 2013. That pretty much killed any chance of this becoming one of the premier rivalries in the NFL. But despite the Ravens winning 11 straight, most of these games were very, very competitive. In fact, from 2008 to 2013, there was really only one game that could be classified as a blowout, and that was a 34-3 beatdown the Ravens handed the Browns in 2009. Other than that, every single game was competitive. Here are some notable ones. Week 3, 2010. Cleveland were big underdogs at Baltimore against a Super Bowl caliber Ravens team, but Peyton Hillis went off for 144 yards rushing and the Browns nearly beat the Ravens, but Matt Roth jumped off sides at the end and cost the Browns the game. Amazingly, the same thing happened the following year. On Christmas Eve, the Browns went down to Baltimore to play a Super Bowl caliber Ravens team, and they put up a hell of a fight, but this time Phil Taylor jumped off sides to lose the game. Can't make that up. The next year on Thursday Night Football, Cleveland once again put up a valiant effort in Baltimore, and this time it even went down to the final play. The entire game was your typical AFC North smash mouth football game. Watching it, you would have no idea the Ravens had swept the Browns four seasons in a row. And keep in mind, the Ravens would go on to win the Super Bowl this year, so it really says a lot about Cleveland's competitive spirit in these games. But at the end of the day, what gave the Ravens the upper hand was that they were always a way more talented team, and they for the most part kept the same nucleus together. 
The Browns, on the other hand, were always rebuilding and starting over, so it was hard for them to ever gain a competitive advantage. Not to mention the Ravens had a franchise quarterback, and the Browns were left gambling on 28-year-old former college baseball pitchers. The Browns would finally beat the Ravens again on November 3, 2013. The Jason Campbell-led Browns beat the Ravens 24-18, giving them their first win over Baltimore in seven seasons. Amazing. However, the Ravens' dominance carried on as they would go on to win seven of the next eight meetings, but once again, every game remained competitive. Some notable games were as follows. Week 3, 2014. The Brian Hoyer-led Browns played great football for majority of the game, but lost a heartbreaker at the very end on a last-second field goal. You may remember this is the game where the Browns ran that trick play with Johnny Manziel, only to have it called back. The following season, the Browns would return the favor. On October 11th, 2015, Cleveland went down to Baltimore and won an overtime thriller 33-30. Josh McCown exploded, throwing for 457 yards. This was the game Gary Barnage had his famous leg catch. The Browns went for the season sweep in Week 12 on Monday Night Football, and everyone remembers what happened there. The following season, it looked like the Browns were going to get revenge for what happened on Monday Night Football. The tanking Cleveland Browns somehow jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead, and Browns fans everywhere were going nuts. But after the Browns' third touchdown, the Ravens blocked the extra point and returned it all the way back for two points, a sick ode to what occurred the previous year. That turned out to be the play that changed the entire game, as the Ravens rallied over the next three quarters and wound up winning 25-20. It's worth pointing out there was a questionable taunting penalty on Terrell Pryor that killed some brief hope the Browns had at the end. In 2017, Cleveland traveled to Baltimore in Week 2, this time with a new young quarterback Deshaun Kaiser. The Browns played tough as always and made it an interesting game. Unfortunately, Deshaun Kaiser threw a pick late in the game when the Browns were about to make it a one-score game. The Ravens went on to win 24-10. By the conclusion of the 2017 season, the Ravens had won 7 of the last 8 meetings over the Browns, and 18 of the last 20. Sadly, this could no longer be considered a rivalry of any kind, as the Ravens now led the all-time series 29-9. This is made all the more disappointing when you consider how close the series was after 2007. It was 11-7, and now it was 29-9. But like I talked about from 2008 to 2013, the Browns-Ravens games from 2014 to 2017 were extremely competitive. In fact, you could argue there was not a single blowout during that stretch. Now you may look at the Week 10 matchup in 2016 as a blowout, but that is a very deceiving 28-7 score. Cleveland led 7-6 at the half, and the score was just 13-7 late in the third quarter. That game never felt like a true blowout. So there never really appeared to be that much separation between the Browns and the Ravens. In the end, it just came down to closing out games, and Baltimore's continuity and experience always gave them the edge. One person who is certainly qualified to speak on this topic is Ravens head coach John Harbaugh. We, we played the Browns many times over the last 11 years, and every one of them has been a really hard-fought game. You know, we've had to block field goals in overtime and take them for touchdowns to win, uh, and they've beaten us. You know, we've, we have been um, we've been good enough to find a way to win a lot of those games. But we've had, the AFC North is, is unique. We've had, literally, we've had dogfights with the Browns and every other team in our division every single year. So it's not, it's no different for us, for the Ravens. We're not sitting there going, oh, it's new, the new Browns. The Browns have always been tough, you know, and the Browns have always been a handful. One could say he's just being polite, but it's not crazy to think he actually believes that. Again, go look at just about every Browns-Ravens game from 2008 to 2017. Yes, you'll see mostly Ravens victories, but you'll also see compelling games that make it seem like both teams are fighting for a playoff spot. That said, moral victories can only get you so much, and at the end of the day, the Ravens had won 18 of the last 20 over the Browns. That's humiliating no matter how competitive the games are. But as the old saying goes, it's darkest just before dawn, and a new chapter of the Browns-Ravens rivalry was on the horizon. On December 7th, 2017, the Cleveland Browns hired John Dorsey to be their new general manager. In the ensuing offseason, Dorsey went to work overhauling and improving the team's roster. Dorsey's most notable personnel move was selecting Baker Mayfield with the number one overall pick in the 2018 draft. Along with a plethora of new talent, Baker Mayfield helped usher in a new era of Cleveland Browns football, at least for a few years. The Ravens would not be able to look at the Browns the same, and that was made very clear in the next Browns-Ravens game. On October 7, 2018, Cleveland hosted Baltimore, and the first overall pick Baker Mayfield got his first win as an NFL starter. It wasn't the prettiest game, and that was reflected on the game-winning field goal by Browns kicker Greg Joseph, but the Browns got the win in overtime 12-9. This was big, and it was the first indication that the Browns-Ravens rivalry was finally competitive again. 
The following season, the Browns showed that 2018 was no fluke. On September 29, 2019, Cleveland traveled to M&T Bank Stadium and humiliated Baltimore 40-25. Lamar Jackson, who would go on to win the MVP this season, was now quarterbacking the Ravens after taking over for Joe Flacco the year prior. After this drubbing, it was clear the Browns were for real and that they were no longer a doormat to the Ravens. However, this game was not enough to save Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens' job, and he was fired at season's end. He was replaced by Vikings offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski, but a coaching change proved to not be a setback for the rivalry. In fact, the 2020 season was another big step forward. Even though the Ravens would sweep the Browns, the second meeting in Week 14 on Monday Night Football was easily the game of the year. Pop for pop, the Browns and Ravens exchanged big plays. Cleveland overcame two 14-point deficits and later took the lead 35-34, but long story short, Justin Tucker drilled a 55-yard field goal to give the Ravens the win. But again, this game was so epic, the rivalry actually intensified despite a season sweep. In 2021, Cleveland and Baltimore would split the season series. Both games were closely contested with the home team coming out on top both times. The first meeting was on Sunday Night Football, the biggest stage in the entire league. The following season would see another shakeup in the rivalry. After four seasons, Cleveland decided to move on from Baker Mayfield when they made a blockbuster trade for Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson. Due to allegations of sexual misconduct, Watson was suspended for the first 11 games of 2022. The Browns and Ravens wound up again splitting the season series, with the home team prevailing both times. Watson only appeared in the second game, a 13-3 victory for the Browns on a Saturday night. And that is the history of the Browns-Ravens rivalry as of July 2023. Wrapping things up, it's safe to say the rivalry between Cleveland and Baltimore is finally becoming competitive again. After 10 seasons of humiliation, the Browns appeared to turn the corner in 2018, having split the season series four of the last five years now. With Cleveland now consistently fielding above average rosters, it appears this trend will continue. This is a good thing. The history between these two rivals is rather significant in NFL lore, so having that history be showcased through a competitive rivalry is definitely the preferred medium for storytelling. Let's just hope 2023 is another big step forward for the rivalry and we're graced with compelling games for many years to come. And who knows, maybe the Browns will even gain the upper hand for the first time. Anyway, that's going to wrap up the video. I've now done a video on the Browns-Steelers rivalry and the Browns-Ravens rivalry. Will I make one about the Browns and Bengals? I guess you'll just have to wait and see. But until then, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. Please follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, and please consider supporting me on Patreon. All of the links will be in the description. Until next time, I'm Ramen Robbie, and thanks for watching.